Hey, hey, Josh Morgan here, also known as Hurricane Man. You know, I chase hurricanes. When I started out years ago, I did it because I was an adrenaline junkie. But my biggest thrill now, collecting great data inside these storms, data that helps scientists understand them. And the thing I'm most into is measuring the air pressure inside the eye, because that tells you a lot about how intense the hurricane is. The lower the central pressure, the stronger the storm. And my tools of choice, Kestrel weather meters and drop D3s. They're small, portable, and accurate. So when a hurricane's coming ashore, I can take these awesome devices into remote locations where there aren't any weather stations to take readings that otherwise wouldn't exist. And after the storm passes, I analyze the data and visualize them in cool infographics. Pretty sexy, huh? Well, to me it is. The data I've collected with my Kestrels have made a difference in many hurricanes, helping our National Hurricane Center accurately assess what happened and how strong these storms were. Now, I've noticed that more and more storm chasers and hobbyists are wanting to do this. That is, measuring extreme weather events to help science. That's very cool. And I thought I'd offer some pointers for using your Kestrels to collect accurate, high-quality air pressure data inside a hurricane. Basically, there's four things to remember. Ready? Let's go. Let's go, 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 go. The first thing is calibration. You want to measure sea level pressure because that's how hurricane intensity is assessed. Now, what does that mean? Air pressure naturally lowers as you gain elevation because the air gets thinner. That means the air pressure even a few feet above water is lower than it is right at sea level. So to get sea level pressure wherever you are, you need to input your elevation into your Kestrel so the instrument can correct what it's measuring. Now, if you're near the ocean and can actually see it, it's usually not too hard to estimate your elevation. Otherwise, it can be tricky. Google Earth can help, but it's hit and miss. Now, there are apps for determining elevation, but unfortunately, I found they're often not accurate. And remember, once you know your ground elevation, you also have to account for how high off the ground the device is. So, for example, if the ground elevation is 10 feet, but your Kestrel is 16 feet above the ground, because it's safe on the second floor of a hotel, the Kestrel's elevation is actually 10 feet plus 16 feet, or 26 feet. And that is what matters for calibration. The good news, once you know your Kestrel meter's elevation, it's easy to input it into the device. Just go to the air pressure view and hit settings. Then scroll down to reference altitude and use the arrow keys to set the device's elevation. Once you do that, your Kestrel is showing corrected sea level pressure. On your Drop D3, you calibrate using the Kestrel Link app on your mobile device. Just go into the settings for your drop, then go to reference altitude barometric pressure. Under reference selection, choose altitude and enter the device's elevation. Under mode selection, choose barometer. Once you do that, your barometric pressure is corrected to sea level. Bam! Next thing to do, set your store rate. This is how often your Kestrel is recording and saving data. You can store readings anywhere from once every 12 hours to once every two seconds. It's easy. On your Kestrel meter, go to memory options, then scroll down to store rate and use the arrow keys to set the desired frequency. On your Drop D3, again, you do it in the Kestrel Link app. Just go to Settings, then go to Manage Device Data. Go to Data Logging Rate and scroll up or down to decide the frequency. Easy. Now, you might be wondering, what's a good store rate? Me, I like to store frequently. The pressure changes in a hurricane can be rapid and volatile, and a high store rate will catch more of the cool details. So, I store at least once per minute and usually even more frequently. For example, I stored once every 30 seconds in Hurricane Roslyn in Mexico this past October. This tiny, violent hurricane passed through quickly, and the high store rate allowed me to capture cool details. You can store even more frequently than that if you want ultra high-res pressure data. But you don't want to risk running out of device memory during the event. So I recommend storing no more than once every 10 seconds on the 5500 and every 20 seconds on the Drop D3. That way, you can make sure you're good, even in a long duration storm that takes more than 24 hours to pass. Now let's talk about protecting the device. Put your Kestrel in a secure location where it won't be disturbed. When I'm on a chase, I often put my Kestrels on sink counters in hotel rooms. That's because bathrooms are usually more sheltered, so even if the windows smash during the storm, the devices will be undisturbed. Now I don't suggest this because Kestrels are delicate. These things are tough as nails. 
It's because they're sensitive instruments, so disturbing them even slightly will cause the air pressure readings to shift a little. On a related point, try to leave your device alone while collecting data. Try not to pick it up and fiddle with it. You'll notice even pressing buttons will cause the air pressure to oscillate. Now, Kestrel meters are also great for measuring wind speed. So if you deploy your Kestrel outside in the storm, of course it's gonna move around a little. Just know that that could have some impact on the air pressure readings. Me, since I really focus on air pressure, I like to keep my Kestrels in controlled environments. My fourth and final point is super important. If you want a pressure trace that accurately represents the hurricane, your Kestrel meter must stay in a fixed location the whole time it's logging data. If, for example, you drive around with the Kestrel in the car, the air pressure readings will reflect not just the hurricane, but also changes in location and elevation as the Kestrel moves around. One of my favorite things when analyzing hurricane data is finding irregular pressure dips because those are often evidence of violent mini swirls called mesovortices. But here's the thing. If you were driving around with the device in the car, that cool pressure dip might not have anything to do with the storm. It might simply be because you drove up a hill. So if you want a clean pressure trace that truly represents the hurricane and the hurricane only, keep your Kestrel in a fixed location. Finally, there's the question of where to deploy your Kestrel as a hurricane's coming. Me, I hunt with a whole fleet of Kestrel meters and drop D3s. That allows me to deploy them at different spots across the impact zone and then come out of the event with a multi-dimensional pressure profile of the hurricane. Like I did in Hurricane Willa in Mexico, I had clean pressure traces from the left eye wall, right eye wall, and right smack in the eye. But if you're not a Category 5 nerd like me and you only have one Kestrel on you, I recommend doing your best to anticipate where the center of the hurricane is going and get the money shot, the sea level pressure reading inside the eye, because that's really what matters. There you have it, my tips for collecting great air pressure data inside hurricanes. But remember, air pressure is only one of many things you can measure with Kestrel weather meters and drop D3s. These things do a whole lot more. In future videos, I'll show you some other tricks. In the meantime, if you have questions or need help, just reach out to me on Twitter and I'll show you how it's done.